The Scottish Government's confirmed it's putting emergency spending controls in place. This includes a stop to the winter fuel payment being given to all pensioners. Instead, the payment will be means tested, while the introduction of a replacement Scottish benefit has been delayed. Social Justice Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville said she had no choice after the Chancellor announced cuts south of the border. It came as Scotland's Finance Secretary Shona Robison ordered ministers to constrain all but essential spending to help pay for public sector pay deals. Our political correspondent Andrew Kerr has more. Unwelcome news for many that the Scottish Government is having to put a break on new spending. Sunny days here in Aberdeen, but bleaker times ahead perhaps as Scottish ministers confirm they will also have to pass on the UK government's cut to winter fuel payments. It will be targeted and not universal. We only got to get it. It's handy. We're near loaded. Come on, saying we're near <laughs> rich. And so but I, I think it's quite wrong that we, we don't get it. I think maybe it should be tested. I think so. Because that is a, a sort of well off pension. At Napier University, the Finance Secretary confirmed the brakes are being put on new government spending to allow public sector pay deals to be reached. Shona Robinson has written to Cabinet Ministers, advising them she will keep a strict eye on spending. Well, this is very significant and, of course, as a direct result of the Chancellor's statement, uh, you cannot announce £22 billion of public sector cuts and for that not to have consequences, and it will have consequences for Scotland. And we, of course, will set all of that out in due course. The cut to the universal winter fuel payment is a UK Labour decision. Here, the leader backs widening the targeting criteria than just those on pension credit. This is typical of the SNP, find somebody else to blame. They have been in power for 17 years. Labour has been in government for a little over a month. The reality is they can't look anywhere else. They have presided over financial mismanagement over the last 17 years. They've also destroyed our public services. It's quite clear that the chickens are now coming home to roost for the SNP, who've made the uh, wrong decision on tax, on public uh, service uh, spending, on public sector pay, and on how to deliver growth for the Scottish economy. Economists point out that going for growth is the way to get out of this, and of course politicians dream of that. But they also highlight that many of the issues that we are seeing are not unexpected. To me, this isn't a huge surprise. It seems a little bit like it could have been predicted because at the time of the budget in December, um, you know, the government didn't set a kind of pay policy, and then the one they have published since probably looked like it was undershooting what was likely to be the pay deals in the end. Tough choices ahead now. Questions remain about the viability of funding the 2026 Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, along with other projects. Details will be announced when Holyrood returns next month. Andrew Kerr, BBC News. Well, let's look a bit deeper into this now and who it's going to affect. Adam Stakura is here from Air Scotland. Good evening, evening. to you, Adam. Evening. Thank you so much. You've had the day to kind of get your head around this and what it's going to mean. What, what are your thoughts initially? I think it's absolutely staggering that this announcement, I mean, we've had this for a couple of weeks. We sort of knew this is probably going to happen, um, but it's really disappointing that it's sort of confirmed in Scotland. The beauty of the devolution of this payment meant that Scotland could do something different, but quite frankly, the hands of the Scottish government are pretty tied if they're not going to get the amount they'd expect to pay for everybody. And with the current fiscal challenges they have, rustling up another 150 or 160 million pounds is well, beyond the pale for them. But I think you know, it's going to be almost 900,000 pensioners in Scotland who are going to lose out as a result of this. There's going to be huge numbers of people who are on the lowest incomes but don't qualify for pension credit. I mean, almost 300,000 older people who are pensioners who live in fuel poverty will now have up to £300 taken out of their mm. state pension package at a time when energy bills will be going up and they've been struggling for years. Do we have a sense yet then of how this will be means tested and exactly who it is going to affect? Well, it's going to be pension credit will essentially be the level for who's deserving of a winter fuel payment in the future. The problem here is the level that is so low. It's about £11,800 a year of income. Anything under that will pretty much qualify you for pension credit. But if you consider that, that's 12.5% of all pensioners in Scotland receive pension credit. We've got huge numbers that are just completely 
out of the picture. Folks who have been receiving this as part of their pension for decades. Yeah, it's, two it's decades 20, it's 20 years old, isn't 20 it? 20 yeah. years. So it's not a bonus, it's not a, a nice to have mm -hmm. for like huge numbers of homes across the country, particularly the really cold homes, the cold parts of the country. This is an essential, and our helpline has been hearing from people for the last few weeks, you know, really anxious, some in tears, really don't know what to do next because this has been an essential part of their winter budgeting and, and a puff of smoke, it disappears. And how much have fuel payments anyway become a greater part of, of the average pensioners? you know, outgoings every month, given the rise that we've seen in energy bills? Look, I think for most households across the country, energy bills have been the, the big ticket to watch, haven't they? Like for the last few years, as prices have been exploding, and as even while inflation has been sort of levelling off, it's still everything's much higher than it was two years ago. And if you consider that 40% of pensioners in Scotland today don't have enough of an income to even pay income tax, and half or 60% of their income is going on energy bills, council tax, and the bare minimum of food, there is no wriggle room. So at a time when, as we'll find soon, the energy price cap will probably go up in a couple of weeks going into the autumn and having money taken out of people's pockets to pay the bills, I think this is going to be devastating for people and it's actually it's, it's brutal. Do you think it's a done deal? And will you be making your concerns known once more to, to both the UK and Scottish governments about this? Yeah, I mean, look, we're absolutely firm that the winter fuel payment should be universal for lots of reasons. There is the argument that the millionaires shouldn't get it, but there are very few in the grand scheme of things. But 85% of pensioners in Scotland say this is important or very important to them. We've made the case to the UK government, we met the Secretary of State for Scotland last week, our partners and colleagues at Age UK and across the UK were actually running campaigns on this with hundreds of thousands of people signing our campaign petition on this. I don't think it's a done deal. I'm not entirely sure if the status quo comes back, but there's got to be something more generous than this. And I find it really hard for any politician, Labour Party or others, to look at this and say it's justifiable that someone with an income of £13,000 a year, for instance, should have this money taken away from them at a time in the winter in Scotland, which will be incredibly tough. Okay. Well, Adam, we're grateful for you coming in tonight and just giving us that perspective. Thank you.